think we're live. If we're live and you guys are watching right now, give me a thumbs up or say something in the comments. Drop in the comments where you're watching from. Then I'll know that this is actually working. What does this mean? Remember to grab. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, YouTube. Huh. Boy, have I got a lot to learn. This is my very first show. Okay, Laredo, Texas. Obviously, we are really actually live. You guys are actually watching. Okay, got it. First ever YouTube Live. So learning how this is going to work this morning. Another Laredo, Texas? Man, what's going on in Laredo? Awesome. Well, excited to hang out with you guys this morning. Um, I am going to be giving... This is a really exciting first time ever that I've done a YouTube Live. So bear with me as I'm learning how the heck all of this is going to work. And I'm paying attention to my um, chat window here. Looks like we got McCone, 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 Georgia. McCone. I don't know how you say it. Orlando, Florida. Hey, Kurt. What's up, buddy? Um, all right. So this morning, we're going to get all into about how to develop out your avatar. So we're going to dive straight off into it. You're going to want a notepad, a pen, a paper. You're going to want to take some notes with you this morning. If I like how this training goes, if you guys like how this training goes, it'd be very, very helpful. If we keep this extremely interactive, I'll be watching that comment section almost nonstop. So help me out with comments. Stay very engaged, interactive with how this thing goes on. We'll probably be hanging out in the neighborhood of about 40 minutes this morning. It's what I think it will take to get through all of the content. And then we'll open it up and have a good time of Q&A towards the end. Make sure that you, if you're here and you invested the the 35, 40 minutes of your Saturday to hang out with me on an insurance train. Like, what is wrong with you people? But since you're doing it, uh, I'm going to hang out towards the end and be sure to stick around and answer any questions you guys got. Uh, and we're going to make this thing happen. Becky Pimble from Wisconsin. Go figure. Becky, you can teach this class. Why don't I just turn this over to you? You run the class for me. I'm going to take off and go uh, hiking with my family. They're they're leaving me here to do a training while they go hiking. I cannot believe this. All right, here we go. Since Becky's not going to automatically just take the whole thing over, I guess I'm going to get started. Let me pull my notes up, make sure we're ready to go. Developing your avatar. So first things first, ladies and gentlemen, your avatar is far more important than your ideal client profile, more important than your target market. If you've been watching much or any of my YouTube content, you'll know just how passionate I get about the avatar. I mention it all the time. And I believe that it is absolutely foundational to everything else that I teach inside of, um, I mean, it's avatar and Jack and Jill selling. Those two pieces are literally the anchor points of everything else I teach. You've got to understand who you love to serve. And here's what's so interesting about the avatar. Like, Sometimes people ask, they're like, all right, Zach, is that just your clever, fun way? Like, I thought that was some blue alien movie or something I can create my little avatar profile on my phone. But no, it's, it's, I've been talking about the avatar before it was a phone thing. And I, I don't know. I don't know where James Cameron movie came into play. But the idea behind the avatar is it's much, much more powerful than just simply knowing who your target market is or knowing who your ideal client profile are. Those things are important. But they do nothing. All they do is put in your mind, here's who I like to work with. This is the ideal client I would like to build my business off of. And, and a lot of times when I've heard the ideal client profile uh, trained or I've heard target market training, it is almost always demographic and geographic. Demographic and geographic. There's nothing inherently wrong with that. That's better than just a shotgun approach of I'll call anyone, anywhere, anytime. Everyone is a potential prospect which is another school of thought that people talk about all the time. Everyone needs what you have to offer. That could not be more untrue. Talk about banging your head against the wall and never developing a cadence or a purpose for what you're out there trying to do. Most of you are extremely aware or familiar with this. If you're not, you need to really dig into all these YouTube videos that I've got for you, like dig into the gatekeeper approach, dig in to the decision maker handshake, dig in to the frameworks that I teach on those things. And you're going to start to understand the avatar is so much deeper than that because of one very important word. And that word is repel, R-E-P-E-L, repel. What? Okay. Target market and ideal client profile can certainly help you learn how to attract a certain type of prospect. It could, it could. But in very, very few circumstances do I ever see anybody get the other side of the equation right, which is repelling the wrong type of prospect. So 
by show of chat window here, how many of you have worked on deals? You've worked on prospects. You followed up and followed up and followed up only to find out even, even some of them, you've opened them as groups. You've opened the, these as cases to find out you hate working with them. You hate servicing them. They are a nightmare client. They never pay their bill on time. They don't let you back in for open enrollment. They uh, give you broom closet conditions at best. I'm watching the chat. Neil says, oh, buddy, way too many. <laughs> Neil, you're going to get a lot of value out of this. Then Sheila Davis says, I've certainly done that. Uh, how many of the rest of you have got a story that you could tell right now about the wrong type of client being inside of your book of business? Friend, that happens for one very simple reason. And here's the tragedy in it is if you're if they're inside your book of business, then the scarier part is they're inside of your actual prospecting pipeline. And so how, how many of you know, like, tell me in the comments, how do you get paid? If you're watching right now, there's, golly, there's 17 of us hanging out this morning. That's cool. How do you get paid? Somebody tell me. I wonder what our delay is. I have no idea what the delay is. I've got Becky saying we get paid by results, Kurt by solving a problem, Tammy Newsom by by our results. Okay, so Tammy and Becky are certainly cheating. They've been around my world a little too long. Most of you would say you get paid by commission, right? You're commission paid, and you're, and you're not wrong. But friend, here's the thing. You really actually get paid based on your results. How many of you have spent a crap ton of time building relationships and following up and doing all this stuff inside of your prospecting pipeline? only to find out it never closes, never goes anywhere, or when it does, it's a freaking nightmare. You are begging them to get the dadgum invoice paid or to do the payroll deduction or to let you back in to see new hires or fill in the blank, fill in the blank, fill in the blank. All of that, all of that can be reduced if not completely eliminated when you stop worrying about your target market, you stop worrying about your ideal client profile, and you start developing out who the heck is my avatar who do I love to serve? How do I develop it and get so good at articulating it, at speaking about it, at telling people about it, that it automatically attracts the right type of avatar while simultaneously in the same moment repelling anyone who is not my avatar? Would you guys like to learn that this morning? I need an amen, a hallelujah, a please, a something. Man, I hope that y'all are catching everything that I'm laying down for you right now. A good avatar attracts the right, repels the wrong simultaneously. Where did I come up with the avatar? So you'd have to rewind with me to 2017. I was in Boise, Idaho for a mastermind conference, spending a lot of money to be inside of this mastermind. And I'm walking through a museum, essentially a museum. And I wish I could share my screen right now, but it, oh, you know what? Oh, never mind. I don't want to take the time. I've got a picture on my phone of literally this, this um, placard that I took a picture of with Sir Ernest Shackleton. You should go Google him. Fascinating. Probably one of the coolest, most underrated um, explorers of the earliest, early 20th century out there. His, his, ice, his uh, ship that he sailed across uh, the, the world took a group of men in the early, 19, early 20th century, early 1900s, and went over to Antarctica, and they were going to cross Antarctica by foot, first expedition to ever do so. And he had placed an ad in the London Times. He literally placed an ad in the London Times in, I believe it was like 1901. I can't remember the exact dates off the top of my head, but the idea behind it is very simple. He placed an ad that specifically said, men wanted. Um, golly, I should have had this pulled up right in front of me. I don't have my notebook right in front. Ah, shoot. See what I get for doing things? Well, oh well. Men wanted hazardous journey ahead, low pay, low wages, safe return, doubtful, honor and recognition in case of success. Yes, I did it. I finally did it. It finally came through. Men wanted hazardous pay, low wages, uh, uh, on, um, safe return, doubtful, honor and recognition in case of success. If interested, apply. Right. The idea was. We're probably going to die. Nobody's ever going to know about this unless we succeed and you're going to get paid crap while we're doing it, right? That is a perfect, like when I read that, 
my mind exploded. I was like, oh my gosh. At the time, I was a regional sales coordinator for Aflac and I was working hard to make sure we could build our team, uh, bring in new agents, train them up, blah, blah, blah. And we had a lot of success, was doing a lot of fun, yada, yada, yada. But when I read what Sean Ernest Shackleton did to recruit his I, ideal agent, his ideal client, it's, it's when I had my epiphany and went, oh my gosh, if I want to do this the right way, if I want to recruit the white, right, white way, and if I want to be teaching my team, this is not about ideal client. It's got to be so much greater than that. Sir Ernest Shackleton was like, hey, I'm going to go do something that matters immensely, and I can only take the best of the best of the best that desire, that desire, that desire to take this type of an insane, stupid, crazy journey. If they don't want to take an insane, stupid, crazy journey, I need to figure out a way to reject them to, not reject them, for them to reject me. I need them to reject me. Like, hear the power in this. I don't want to waste my time. I don't want to waste their time. There's a very specific type of avatar, a very specific type of adventure that I need to attract and I need to repel all others. He wrote an ad that did exactly that. In the early 1900s, I read that and my mind exploded. I was like, holy crap. What if? Well, yeah, it's it's definitely being recorded because we're live streaming it on YouTube. <laughs> Rebecca, hey, Kurt Googled it for me. Look at that. Men wanted for hazardous journey, low wages, bitter cold, long hours of complete darkness, safe return, doubtful, honor and recognition in the event of success. My God, do you like read that? If you're, if you're a crate, you're like, you're reading that ad in the early 1900s. It is really apparent that most people, and that's what I want you to understand. Most of you have your ideal client completely backwards because you try to do everything you can to attract everyone. Oh yeah, if you just have simply three or more employees, I'll, in fact, you don't even have to have three employees. I'll do I'll do I'll do products direct. I'll do anything I I have an insurance license. I'll do anything I can to help you. And you do it because you think you're helping, but friend. When you try to help everyone with everything, I'm going to make a very strong argument. You help very few people with much of anything. The people who do the absolute best are the ones that put blinders on, narrow down in their focus and say, I am going to figure out a way to serve such a specific avatar. I will pour my heart and soul on the table for this very specific type of avatar. I will get really, really freaking good at this specific avatar. And then I will do everything I can to serve that avatar at the highest level. I don't want to serve a whole anyone with anything just because I can. I want to serve a very narrow audience as deep as I possibly can to bring them the most value. If you're getting this, I need an amen. I need an app. I need something. I got to know if we're, if we're picking up what Zach's putting down right now. Okay. So if we've got a very good understanding of what the avatar is not, is not, if we simply take Sir Ernest Shackleton's London ad post from the 1900s, we copy and paste it, which is essentially what we did when I was a regional sales coordinator in Colorado Springs, which if you know anything about our story, we went from being a really damn good team that had new associate wins and opening a lot of accounts. And we were winning by scoreboard standards. But when we implemented, when we, when we moved beyond what we were already doing good job at, and we stopped allowing good become the enemy of great. And we said, oh my gosh, if we really dial in, who is our recruiting avatar? If we really dial in, who's our prospecting avatar? If we teach our veteran agents, who is their book of business avatar? If we put these things in place in 2017, watch what happens in 17, 18, 19. And then now we get to teach this stuff to people all over the country. Attract the right, repel the wrong. That's the avatar. So if you got your notepad out, you got your pen, you got your paper, I'm going to give you the exact framework that I teach in order to do this. I've updated it just a little bit uh, since it's completely virtual and I don't have you guys inside of a room where we do the exercise and we do all the things, but you know, we'll see how this works and then I'll be waiting for your feedback. So we are 18, let's see, we're 14 minutes in. Man, we're maybe ahead of schedule. This is the weirdest thing in the world for me. Here we go. Developing your avatar. You're developing your avatar. We'll have four pieces to it. The very first thing I want you to write down, developing your avatar 
If you haven't already written down attract the right, repel the wrong, that's the very first thing you write down now. Here we're going to get started. First thing I want you to have written on your paper, or second thing I want you to have written on your paper, um, section number one, if you will, is who. Who is this avatar? This would be where most people would write out their ideal client profile or their target market, but that's where they stop, right? Listen to me loud and clear. It is not. Your avatar is not employers who have three or more employees. Your avatar is not automotive shops with three or more employees. Your avatar is not diesel automotive shops that run a million dollars or more per year in net earnings with three or more employees. That none of those are a freaking avatar because none of those attract the right or repel the wrong. And here's what I want you to understand about when you get super specific about demographic style information, how many of you have ever done this before where you started to dial in or you started to try to figure out who you're, they call it a vertical market, right? I'm going to work in the blue collar industry and I'm going to really specialize with um, mechanics and trades, mechanics and trades. That's my, that's my jam. That's who I'm going to work with. How many of y'all have done anything like that? where you picked a industry or a demographic and you've chased that down. I'm watching. Hi, sister. You going to go hiking? I thought you all had already left. Lots of people. Me, me, me. Oh, for sure. Yep. Okay. So here's my question to you. You want to say good morning? Sure. Good morning. Good morning. Say, develop your avatar. Develop your avatar. So you're going to go hiking now? I'm going to go hiking now. All right, go have fun. I love you. Okay, where was I on that? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Dialing into a niche or whatever you want to call it. When you, <laughs> everybody's telling you hi, Casley. When you develop or when you dial it into a niche or anything like that, that's fine. There's nothing inherently wrong with that, except it's not an avatar. The reason it's not an avatar, how many of you have niched down only to find out that there were still jerks inside of that niche that you couldn't stand dealing with? How many of you niched down to find out there were people inside of that niche that didn't want what you had to offer, wouldn't give you the time of day, disrespected you like crazy, still gave you broom closet conditions? And you're like, what the heck, man? I was told that if I really picked a niche and I would understand their pain points and read about market industry and analysis crap and read Google articles and send them articles about their specific industry, I would be viewed as the expert. And I've done that. I, I know more about mufflers and I've never even installed one. And yet no muffler shop wanted to give me the time of day. Are y'all feeling me right now? Anybody done this crap? Anybody feel that when you do that kind of garbage, not only, here's what happens. You think because somebody told you to narrow your focus and to get your niche down, you think that's what you've done. And then, then they're like, well, and you need to read up on that industry and read trade publications and magazines and articles and forward crap out of the internet to them. Stupidest, dumbest advice. I, what I would be curious of is if the person that's giving the advice has ever done the shit they're telling, the, whoop, 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 sorry has ever done the stuff they're telling you to do. I want to know if they've done it and done it successfully and sustainably. That's the filter that most of you guys need to start learning. If you haven't done that, you need to put a filter in place that when people are speaking into you or when people are giving you advice, this applies to, by the way, marriage advice, financial advice, weight loss advice, sales advice, whatever it is. Don't just listen to the moron on YouTube that's talking about the stupid stuff and be like, well, Zach said, I don't care who's telling you about it. You need to filter that through, have they done, do they drink their own Kool-Aid? Have they done it sustainably and have they done it successfully? And then if you want to have an insane filter, this gets rid of 99.9% .9 of people. Have they taught other people how to do this successfully? Now, you put those four filters in place, you're going to only end up with the best damn cup of coffee you've ever tasted. You're going to end up with the best freaking advice out there. It's real simple. If you want to learn how to have a fantastic, amazing, wonderful, sexy, passionate, insane marriage, find someone who's got that, 
has done it sustainably and successful and listen to their advice. Anyway, all right. Sorry, I get very frustrated, like frustration level near nuclear status when I hear so much of the sales advice that's given from sales trainers. And I wasn't always very popular with a lot of them because I would ask like, have you ever done what you're teaching people to do? Have you done it successfully? Have you done it sustainably? Because I, I know you haven't because the advice that you're giving is total malarkey. Total malarkey. Friend, niching down, ideal client profile, target market, industry insights, industry reports, all of that junk is junk. It is a complete illusion of waste of time. If, if you've got the time and energy to do it, do it. Your return on your time investment is still pathetic because if you don't know this, you get paid on results, nothing else. You don't get paid on intentions. You don't get paid on no like trust. You don't get paid on relationships. All the BS that you get, that you're having your head, that you think you need to do to be successful in this business, you're, you're wrong about most of it. This business is so so much easier. It is so much simpler. It is so much more rewarding financially, emotionally, physically, spiritually. It is an amazing, wonderful, awesome business to be in unless you've put yourself in freaking prison and given somebody else the keys to let you out. I, I meet more, like this is why this stuff fires me up because so many of the people that I work with and meet have been living their freaking entrepreneur. They've been surviving an entrepreneurial nightmare as opposed to living their dream. This morning, listen to me loud and clear. If you will learn how to develop your avatar, you can get rid of industry insights and, and, and publications and sending them stupid articles that they're, you, they don't need your dumb advice about how to run a better muffler shop. They Oh my gosh. Y'all know this. You know this. Those of you that have ever even sat through classes and you've listened to stuff like that, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, it hasn't set well with you. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, you walk back out of that room. You walk back out of that room and you often, if you're anything like me, I'd walk out of some of those rooms and I'd be like, I don't know if I want to be in this business anymore. I don't know if I'm, I don't know if I'm smart enough to be in this business anymore. If I, if I have to start learning more about their business than they know about their business so that I can sell them my stupid accident and cancer insurance, are you kidding me? Now, the good news is, just so I'm being ultra freaking crystal clear here, so much of that training has gone away and it's been replaced with value add service training. Now, now the shiny object of the day is, hey, your product, you can't figure out how to make your product valuable enough. You can't figure out how to establish need for your product. Neither can we. Don't worry about it. We're going to just pile on more value adds and more value adds and more value adds. And we're going to get you to sell more crap, most of which you don't get compensated on. So again, you don't, y'all think you get paid commission. You get paid for results. I'm going to let that just continue to sink in. If you'll develop out your avatar, get crazy passionate about this, understand that if you attract the right, repel the wrong, you grow a pipeline, you build that pipeline to the 250 magic number that you've heard me talk about in these YouTube videos, you put those 250 prospects through the law of familiarity follow-up system that is designed with pure intention to ensure that if you're going to put them through a 10-step follow-up, it attracts the right ones pushes the rest of them out of your way so that you can have a clean, clear pipeline full of nothing but your avatar. And then your only other point is to figure out, do you have desire? Hey, avatar, do you have desire? If you are my avatar and you have desire, you will schedule appointments. And then if you know how to run a damn appointment, you will close them. Hello. Can I, I mean, come on. Are y'all excited about this? Is this helpful? All right, I knew I knew I couldn't get through this whole thing without getting fired up and chasing a rabbit, but I hope I hope that rabbit helped somebody. If it's helping you, please let me know. All right. I need to take a drink of coffee. How do y'all like my no-shave November? I look like a homeless guy here on YouTube.
preaching about sales. Maybe that's the fifth filter. Do they have a horrible looking beard? All right, get your notebook out. Notebook out. Keep teaching, big bro. Yes, preach, preach. Love it. Good information. Your passion inspires me. Oh, Kurt, come on, buddy. Grizzly. <laughs> uh, what's going to be so fun is some of you guys are going to like show this to your team or you're going to show this to your hierarchy. Or you're going to show it to your manager and they're going to be like that moron. He wears T-shirts, ball caps, and doesn't even freaking shave. And he, you're listening to his advice. Well, yeah, dumbass. Never mind. I'm gonna whoop whoop. Come back in, Zach. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Developing your avatar. Here's the framework. There are four pieces of the framework. The very first piece of the framework is who. Who do I love to serve? Put little check boxes underneath it. Two or three bullet points. Here, we're gonna go who. Who are they? Like literally, I love working with, and then it's bullet point number one, two, maybe up to three bullet points. The next one just below that is going to be who, but, but, like that's the next huge header is but, and then in parentheses, feelings, but feelings. So who, dot, 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 but feelings, dot, dot, dot. Then we move to category or subcategory, excuse me, subcategory number three desire who but feelings desire last one outcome who but feelings desire outcome okay hopefully you're writing this down because then i'm going to show you exactly how to apply the avatar framework so that you come up with how the heck all this works so here we go if you go back up to the who, watch, this is my avatar. This is who I love to serve. This is who fires me up. This is what, well, hold on. I'll tell that story in a minute. Who I love to serve, right? Just as an example, like as you're brainstorming this out, licensed insurance agents with Aflac Colonial or other big carriers. Licensed insurance agent with Aflac Colonial or other big carriers. So check this out, right? Zach is a sales trainer. That's a huge, like, that's a big title. I love to help salespeople learn how to make more money. That would be what most people would think that I do, but it's not at all. Does my sales training that I do and that I provide and my sales methodologies and my frameworks, does it apply to almost any sales environment in almost any sales vertical or sales niche? The short answer would be yes. And do you know why? Because I'm one of the very few people that don't teach scripts. I don't teach best practice bullshit. I teach human being based psychology. And when people understand how and why people make decisions, and you're able to put frameworks about how and why people make decisions, then good Lord Almighty, it's not hard. You can apply a lot of what I teach to preaching. How and why people make decisions. Very simple. Who? Licensed insurance agents with Aflac, Colonial, or other. Let's get a little bit more specific, though. Love. They love that they get to help people serve business owners and protect employees. Okay? Licensed insurance agent with Aflac, Colonial, or other big carrier. Love they get to help people serve business owners and protect employees. Passionate about protecting people's paychecks and helping people when they need it most. Woo! That's such a great avatar. Licensed insurance agents love what they do. Passionate about protecting and helping people. Does that make sense so far? My, are y'all following me? That would just fall under nothing but the who. But, but they feel the business is starting to get far too complicated. They feel brokers are being getting brokers are beginning to take over the entire marketplace. They feel they are working harder and getting paid less than ever before. They feel as though their renewals disappear faster than they can write new business. Okay, so I know y'all are writing notes on your notepads, but I'm waiting for that chat window as well. I need to see if y'all are following this. Who? Licensed insurance agents. 
Athlock, Colonial, or other big carriers. People that love, they get to help people serve business owners and protect employees, passionate about protecting paychecks and helping people when they need it the most. But man, they sure feel like the business has gotten far too complicated. They often talk about how brokers maybe are taking everything over. They're working harder and harder and harder and getting paid less. They feel like their renewals disappear as fast as they can write new business. Okay, if you're paying attention to this, there's a whole bunch of you that are watching right now that went, oh my gosh, I'm a licensed insurance agent with one of these carriers. Yeah, I love getting to help people. That's one of the reasons I got into this business. Yeah, I love that we help people out when they need it the most. Check, check, check. Wow, that's really good. But then when I start talking about those feelings, one of two things should be happening right now. Those feelings are what begin to attract the right in like a freaking magnet or repel the wrong way where they're like, no, I don't feel like the business is all that complicated at all. I love, I mean, it's pretty easy. Brokers, I don't care. I work with them. I, it doesn't matter to me at all. Working harder and get paid less. You know what? Hard work. I was roofing houses last summer, getting paid $22 an hour. I'm cold calling this year and making more than that. I don't feel like I'm working hard. It's not that hard. Renewals. I don't even know what renewals are. Who cares? Attract the right, repel the wrong. I am crystal freaking clear in this next part. So watch. Who but feelings desire. And they just desire for the business to be simple, fun. They want to have fun again, financially rewarding. They want to have a great team, not be worried about all the gossip and politics. And if you don't do this, then I'm going to do that. They just want to win, like actually win again. They don't want to be in constant freaking chasing the number mode. God forbid we actually have fun, make money and win. Who? But feeling, desire. Fourth, outcome. So what do you do for the who you serve? What's the outcome your avatar gets working with you? It's very simple. I help those people, those avatars, and I help them have their cake and eat it too. I help them protect the business they've built, the renewals, and have fun. Basically, I teach people how to stop paying brokers and just become the damn broker. Who but feelings desire outcome. If you can get that crystal clear on who your avatar is and the outcome you, you deliver for your avatar, you will attract people, the right people, and you will repel the wrong people faster, easier, and better than ever before. This is the reason why when I get every single, now it's almost every single day, but it is definitely one to two to three times a week, I will get an email or an Instagram direct message or a Facebook DM from someone in one of the carrier nation world that says how much they disagree with what I'm teaching. They wish that I would stop doing it. I'm undermining what they teach inside of their sales school, or I've lost my way in what I used to uh, stand for or believe, which is so stupid. Those morons don't know me at all. I've always been the person that bucked the system because the system is freaking broken. And it's okay. I can, I can read them. I can smile. I can laugh a little bit. I can hit the delete button. I've learned to stop even replying. It doesn't matter. A person convinced against their will is of the same opinion still. Like if the people that bitched and complained actually watched my uh, videos and actually dug into my training, they would realize that candidly, I'm right and they're wrong. <laughs> I'm that positive of it because I have a filter that I get to put everything through. I'm not trying to be braggadocious or a jerk or any of those things. I'm just that confident about the outcome that gets delivered when working with my avatar. It's that simple. And when people are not the avatar, I am gleefully excited. Like it is so freeing when people raise their hand and identify themselves as not your avatar. 
I would rather find that out way before I start having to try to work with them than to have to work with them to find out I can't stand working with that person or that profile or that, 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 and have to fire them. I've fired bad clients. There's, that's a whole nother story for a whole nother day. But my goal would be, what if I just stopped attracting bad clients? What if that just wasn't in my pipeline? What if I intentionally with purpose had a process by which I attracted the right, repelled the wrong, did it through developing your avatar? Who are they? What feelings do they have or but feelings? Desire that they actually care about an outcome that you provide. When if you go back now, you take that framework of developing your avatar and you apply it against the um, uh, gatekeeper approach. You apply it against the decision maker handshake um, on YouTube. It's called DM Meeting 101. You apply this stuff to DM Meeting 101, uh, the secret process to schedule more appointments than ever, and the gatekeeper approach. You'll start to understand, like, oh my gosh. When I get that freaking crystal clear and fired up about who my avatar is, it'll make it abundantly easier to put through my law of familiarity follow-up system to attract the right, repel the wrong. Are you guys getting this? Is this making sense right now? Was this helpful? A little bit difficult because I couldn't share my screen. I didn't know that I wouldn't have that ability until now, but oh well. <laughs> Looking at my chat window again here. Pretty cool. We got 20 of us hanging out right now. All right. I told you guys this would take about 40 to 45 minutes. We're 36 minutes in. I'm finished. I'm finished. Holy cow. I even chased a rabbit and I still got done. I know, Kurt. I just didn't have time to learn the OBS for live streaming. So, but yes, it's, it's in my never ending to-do list. All right, questions. Let's open this thing up for just general Q&A real quick. Specifically, not general Q&A, but Q&A specifically to prospecting avatar, all that kind of stuff. What can I clarify? How would this be more helpful when I do it again next time? Um, I'm going to work on developing out my actual worksheet, updating our worksheet from our workbook. By the way, holy cow, I can't believe I almost forgot this. I cannot believe. Uh, if you are not in my Sales Ninja Insiders program, I would love to have you in Sales Ninja Insiders. Love to have you in Sales Ninja Insiders. It is um, it is not technically open for enrollment right now, but I will open it up just on this live stream. I'll open it up for a couple of hours and then I'm closing it again. Um, so if you want to be part of uh, Sales Ninja Insiders... Other shameless plug while you guys are getting ready to type your questions or comments in. Thank you, Jeremy. I appreciate that, brother. Uh, revolutionretreat.com. Revolutionretreat.com. If, yeah, if you enjoy YouTube and you enjoy some of this live stuff that we do, come hang out with me in Phoenix, Arizona in January. Myself, four other speakers are going to be pouring into you for three days revolutionretreat.com. You do not want to miss revolutionretreat.com. Thank you, Becky. Always remember a good no is better than a bad yes. I highly recommend joining and following Zach's coaching program. Appreciate you, Becky, Jamie. All right. Anyone else? Questions, comments, concerns, clarification? Let's do this thing. I'll hang around for just a minute or two. I can't believe that I told you guys it'd be 45 minutes. It's 39 minutes and we've been done for three minutes. This is amazing. Neil Riddle. Let's say that you're relatively new to sales. How do you even know who you love to serve? Neil, that, oh my gosh. Will y'all please help Neil out? Holy cow. Neil, number one, if you're not in Sales Ninja Insiders, get in Sales Ninja Insiders. It's going to, you'll learn more in the next 30 days than what you're going to learn in well, unless you like learning through getting punched in the face. If you enjoy just getting punched in the face over and over and over again, then don't join. How do you learn? Uh, how do you learn? Uh, how do you even learn who you love to serve? Really simple. If you, if you don't learn through others' mistakes, that's, <laughs> I'm getting punched in the face. Learn through other people's mistakes, number one, okay? 
it's not that you have to figure out exactly who you love to serve, but understand the avatar more specifically is about the psychographic, not the demographic. It has nothing to do with, man, I just, I love blue collar, white collar, muffler shops, attorney offices. It doesn't matter. There are a-holes in every single area of life. I'm not interested in the demographics near as much as I am the psychographics. Psychographics, I love getting, here's a perfect example. And I guess since Neil asked it, let's dig into it. If I was to write my my prospecting avatar as a as an, as an colonial agent or AFLAC agent, Neil, I don't know who you work for or what you're doing, but I would say something like my who. I love getting to work with small business owners who genuine who who genuinely care about their employees. They would love to put a benefits package in place, but feelings, but it's it's too complicated or maybe cost too much or they don't have a big enough budget. But boy, they desire, they would love to be able to help out their people if they could. Like, look how fast that was. That was that easy. The number one problem that you guys are going to have when you develop out your avatar is you're going to overcomplicate the heck out of it. You're going to try to put in way too much. And then your avatar statement takes 40 or 50 or 60 or 70 seconds to deliver. Way, 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 way too long. Here's how hard your avatar should be. Yeah, I, I love getting to work with small business owners who genuinely care about their employees and would love to put benefits in place or some insurance programs in place, but feel that it's either too expensive or they just haven't found the right fit or maybe they didn't have a big enough budget. But if they could, they would. If they found the right solution, they would. That right there was the who but desire. It was that fast. That was the avatar. It took 14 seconds and the outcome is very easy. I help do that. I help them find programs that their people will actually want and can afford. Would you be willing to give me 15, 20 minutes? Let's see if we can help you. Who but feelings desire. Neil, was that helpful? Neil, that was a freaking great question, man. I'm glad you brought that up. For those of you that stuck around, that one little piece right there was probably worth it all by itself. Dog, so good. Well, thanks, G. Homeboy. I'm not cool enough to know what language you're supposed to use. I'm getting old. So I think I was told to say that's sus. I don't have a clue what it means. I may have just cussed at all of you and don't even know it. Great question, Neil. All right. Well, I, the, the comments seem to be slowing way down, even though we got quite a few people watching. So I am assuming that we can wrap this baby up and put it to bed. Don't be cringe. Crap. See, don't know what that means. That's sus, yo. All right. If we've, if we have, uh, uh, the meeting has now went into Gen Z slang mode. We're obviously over. Thank you guys so much for coming. Hope you had a wonderful time. It's been a fantastic hanging out with you. NinjaNation.net backslash SNI. Get in today if you want to be part of that program at the, at the $29. Otherwise, wait and pay more money in the future. I don't care. Either way. Uh, RevolutionRetreat.com if you would like to get information about um, the Revolution Retreat coming up in January revolutionretreat.com. Tammy, you are so welcome. I always love having you around. You bring such great energy to anything and everything that we do. Jeremy, thanks, buddy. I appreciate you, man. Neil, great to see you. Kurt, everybody that came and hang out with me today, I appreciate you guys so much. Adios, everybody.